This is the motor speed problem, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So uh, I like this problem, uh, by the way. Uh, it's, it's a real, it's a motor. It's, uh, uh, it's got a, a relatively uh, simple turn function, first order, but it has a lot of physical meanings. We, we, we can maybe get a better understanding of this uh, connection between uh, the physical world and uh, the mathematics. So, so, uh, so, so, Gianfranco, uh, do you want to uh, describe uh, the physical side? What do you understand here? What, what are we looking at? Uh, if you're referring to the circuit diagram, then as far as I understand it, there's essentially um, an applied voltage to just a sort of a simple RL system, which is essentially the model of how a motor functions. Okay. Uh, the applied voltage generates a, um, a time varying magnetic field, which causes the rotor to spin. But in order to get the rotor to spin, you have to overcome some sort of, or not some sort of, but you have to overcome the rotor's inertia, which is that constant J. Right, right, right. Right, so, so, uh, uh, <clears throat> That's a very good the description to start with. So, so this is a physical world. You know, this is a, this is a physics. Uh, uh, what the uh, uh, Franco described is uh, on the on the on the electrical side. Uh, this is like a coil, coil in the motor, and uh, the the, mo the motor is modeled on the electrical side by a, by an inductance L. And uh, the coil has the resistance, armature resistance. Okay. And uh, uh, this is the armature, right? And, and uh, what the, the stator is, it's not shown here, but uh, uh, the, uh, the armature and uh, uh, stator interact with each other uh, to make the motor spin. Can you describe that part, Gio Franco? How, how, how does that work? So if I remember my electric machines course correctly, yeah, that's uh, it. as soon as you apply a voltage uh, inside the, I believe it's the stator, depending on whether or not it's an AC or a DC motor, uh, you end up energizing a coil and in passing a voltage through a coil or rather a current through a coil, you generate a magnetic field. The magnetic field, uh, moves the rotor, which has a permanent magnet attached to it, because there's opposing magnetic fields that are generated, and this happens repeatedly, causing the motor to spin. Right, right. Let, let's uh, uh, that's uh, that's uh, roughly right, but let's keep it simple. Let, let's make the stator permanent magnet. Okay, let's let's not uh, mess with the uh, stator. Right. So 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 stator is a is a permanent magnet, and when you apply. Uh, we apply uh, voltage to uh, uh, which Gianfranco says very correctly. When you when you when you apply energy or voltage across the uh, uh, armature, uh, you apply uh, you you induce a uh, uh, magnetic magnetic field uh, because uh, you have inductor here, you have a coil in here, and the voltage will generate a current current to magnetic field. Okay. So 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 here is something you can manipulate. You can you can uh, uh, make the current go this way. You can make current go the other way. So you can uh, you can man you can manipulate uh, time wise uh, and also strength wise this uh, magnetic field. Right. So so in terms of control, you can control this magnetic field on the armature side, the 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 the, 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 the rotating part. Okay. Now, if the stator is a permanent magnet and the uh, uh, armature is uh, rotating, what is the basic wor working principle that you can keep the uh, uh, armature, uh, you keep it rotating? What do you need to do? This is uh, going back to your machine class, this is going back yeah. to your power electronic class. How does this May matter? I 
Go ahead, uh, Vishnu. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, so as Tio Franco mentioned that we energize a magnet and it, as we all know, North and South Pole. So it actually rotates and then how, that's how armature rotates around the, the what is it, the magnet. It uh, creates a magnetic field around that magnet when we energize or when we provide a power supply to the magnet. Yeah. But, but, but that's like a basic basic understanding of the of the uh, armature that is spin around the magnet and spin the motor. Right. Mm. I have I haven't uh, 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 heard the key word here. Uh, so so the stator has a permanent magnet. Uh, stator generates a, a permanent magnetic field. Okay, stator uh, the stator is permanent magnet. It doesn't change. What changes is the uh, uh, magnetic field. Uh, change in the rotor design. In, induced by the current in the coil. Yeah, rotor. Rotor, right. Yeah. So, so, so uh, current. So, so tell tell me how 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 does this work? There is a working like there is a circular. Uh, the design of motor is a circular. There is a magnet are, are placed in the circular place, and we design the rotor with the uh, number of poles which we use. As like uh, the number of poles is the equation we use with the speeds and the frequency, and by using the pole and the copper wire winding. And when we supply to the uh, uh, voltage and current to the winding, they create the magnetic field, which is uh, uh, proportional to the, the magnets, which is connected to the outer body and the rotor is rotating. And the shaft is connected to the center of the rotor. And now the motor is work. All right, but, 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 but you have a permanent uh, south and the north pole in the stator. Yeah. How, how how does it keep rotating? Because uh, when source meet source, you get a push. When source meet a pull or a north, it get a, a pull, right? So so for this uh, keep uh, uh, for for this to start rotating, you need some sort of a uh, 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 rotating magnetic field, right? The the rotor the gen, uh, the magnetic field generated by the rotor has to be rotating one, has to has to have a pattern. Okay, and, and uh, how how is that pattern generated? How, what's the what's the work, working principle of a motor? We're all electrical engineering students. This is our bread and butter. I mean, I could sort of answer that from a practical implementation sense, where in the past I've used a DC supplied voltage that goes into a MOSFET H bridge to create an alternating current. Right. That, that's a but, key word. That's a key word. Alternating current. So, so what, what goes through this uh, armature circuit has to be alternating current. And G. Franco also uh, 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 told us that the alternating current is generated by the uh, H-bridge, which is a particular uh, 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 topology of uh, 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 what the four transistors, four power transistors connected uh, together into a bridge circuit. And that bridge circuit can be can be uh, uh, can be uh, manipulated by the pulse width modulation signal, so you can turn on and turn off a, 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 a power transistor on demand. That's how you how you go from a DC to a AC uh, current. And that that's AC current generated a rotating magnetic field, and if this rotating magnetic field is designed properly, it's going to interact with the stator. And make the motor turn. Did I uh, get it right, uh, Gianfranco? Is it same with the DC motors as well, Professor? The DC motor, yeah. Uh, before I go there, uh, Gianfranco, I uh, I'm sorry I interrupt you, but uh, uh, continue. Uh, 
continue. Oh, there's not much more to add. What you stated is correct. Um, and as far as I understand, at least for brushless DC motors, uh, you use basically the same control scheme that you mentioned. You use a PWM signal to drive an H bridge, which generates a pseudo alternating current to turn the motor. Right. Right. So, so, so uh, the the uh, the challenge in motor design is, is to get this uh, alternating current right. When you get a current right, it will interact with the uh, perm permanent uh, magnetic field generated by the stator. Then it's, it's then this rotates. Right. Go back to Tesla. Tesla is first uh, uh, a human being who invented AC motor. AC motor. Okay. Go back to his invention and and see how that works. It, it, it's not a DC motor, he invented, he, he, uh, he invented a cage motor. And the, the, uh, he, he, he was, uh, uh, for Tesla's uh, uh, motor, uh, it's, uh, he's uh, applying the AC uh, to the uh, stator. And that stator inter induced a uh, AC in the rotator. The rotator is not powered. But the rotator is the uh, 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 rotator uh, would uh, would uh, interact with the um, uh, the alternating magnetic field generated by the stator. So that that's even more uh, more uh, uh, um, conceptually uh, more complex than the DC motor. When DC motor, it just take a DC uh, DC or the turn it into AC and make the make the uh, uh, rotor uh, turn. Right. But the Tesla is doing the other way around. T Tesla is, is putting a, a coil in the middle of, uh, of the cage and uh, change the uh, power the, uh, uh, the, 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 the stator by uh, AC. Right. So uh, I, I want to do this because uh, in all the control, con control cores or even in signal system, we bypass the physics apart almost uh, instantaneously, we don't even talk about this. And then we go to go to turn function. The, the, then we start uh, just uh, controlling a uh, a uh, 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 controlling a uh, uh, mathematical equation. We never control mathematical equation. We control the real things. We so we need to understand all these all these uh, uh, coefficients. And these are the uh, numbers you find on on motor uh, data sheet. Yeah, so you found, uh, so so you're 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 studying uh, engineering, right? Study engineering. Study engineering. Don't turn this into a mathematical study. Okay. So so if you are a, a, a electrical engineering major, and uh, uh, you cannot explain the working principle of uh, a motor, be it AC motor or DC motor, in three minutes. Then uh, you need to do some. You need to be able to do that. You need to be able to 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 uh, to tell uh, a uh, non-technical person how a motor works in three minutes or less. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> so go on, uh, Gianfranco. Uh, tell us what these equations represent. Uh, so let me take a look at what's on the screen. Okay. Those yeah. are sort of the basic differential equations that are derived uh, that relates the induced voltage to the motor's inertia. Because in order to drive the motor, you have to overcome the inertia J. Oh. Um, and because the basic model for a motor is just an RL circuit, that's why we have the parameters uh, resistance times current and L di dt. Right, right. So, so, so you are here. Uh, let, let, how about this? Uh, what does this uh, uh, tell us? Let me go. Let me go up. System, uh, system equations. Okay. T is T is a torque. Okay. K, KT is a torque constant. I is a current. 
So what does this equation say, Geofranco? Oh, that's just sort of a, for lack of better wording, a rewriting of force equals mass times acceleration. In this case, torque is a rotational force. Um, our accelerating or driving force is current. Uh, this is that's kind of how I was taught to relate things to rotating machines. I don't know if that's one hundred percent accurate, but yeah. Uh, any, anybody else uh, uh, can can jump in here to to uh, to to describe what what's the physical meaning of this? See, uh, uh, Franco, you you did okay. You you this is uh, this is uh, something new. I'm asking uh, everyone to to do. You know, I. I'm asking you what's what is the physics behind the, these abstract equations? Then we then we'll get to your channel function, Geofranco. Let's uh, just be patient. We're getting there, okay? So so what what does this uh, what does this mean physically? Well, if you uh, uh, move i to the other side, t over i equals this constant. What does the constant mean? And here I just say the constant factor. And th th this is what I don't like about the, uh, this academic uh, uh, treatment. What's a, con what's, what's a constant factor? In industry, we'll never say constant factor. In, in industry, in the motor data sheet, we'll tell you, it will tell you what exactly this constant means. It's got a name for it. The, the, the person who wrote it obviously uh, didn't know. So this is uh, this state uh, as an academic uh, exercise. You know, engineer would never do this. Like, what's the constant factor? Come on, just so sounds so dry, so academic. It's got physical meaning. So so say what it is. Say what this is. I I couldn't hear. I think it's. Uh, I, I couldn't hear. It. Sorry. Yeah, what what the what what does this constant mean? I mean, t is a t is torque. Did they say somewhere the t is torque? Torque generated by it, it didn't even define what t is. <laughs> let, let me go up. Okay, t is uh, is the ratio between the torque output and the armature current input. Right. That that's what kt is. So KT got a name. Do you know the, uh, what the what's the name of KT? Is it Sir Professor Gain? Uh, well, any ratio can be can be uh, described as a game, but you didn't make any progress. You just call it the, another name instead of constant factor. You call it a game. But what does it mean? What what's physically? Does it mean? Uh, I think it's a proportionality constant. Sir. It's a proportional, yeah. That's that's still a constant. Yeah. We're we're not making any progress. So number one, T is torque. T is torque. Okay, so it should be defined somewhere, it, but the, unfortunately, it didn't. I is the armature armature current. Yeah, armature current. That's that's okay. Every variable should be uh, uh, described like this. If I is armature current, what is T? T is motor torque. This is very important equation. This is where the energy transfer happen. You turn the energy from uh, current to torque. Isn't it uh, what the, uh, the the motor is designed for? So if any equation uh, is important uh, in, uh, in the motor, this is the most important equation in the motor. Do you agree? Yeah. It characterizes what this motor does. Given how I much, think... given, a, a, given a, 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 a current, induce a current in the coil, how much torque do you generate? Isn't, that, that, the most, isn't, isn't that the most important uh, Characteristic of a motor. And uh, with electric cars these days, this is the all the uh, th this is the, uh, the name of the game with electric cars. Now, if I say electric cars, it gets your attention, right? What what does electric car do? 
you get rid of gas engine. So all your torque come from current. Right? So, 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 so for the last uh, 30, 40 years, people are working like crazy to try to, uh, uh, to, to, make, uh, to, to get more torque out of a motor. So, so they basically redesigned the motor. They call it the permanent, the permanent magnet uh, uh, motor, right? PS, uh, PS permanent uh, synchronous PM, uh, PM uh, SM. Permanent magnet synchronous machine, PMSM. So billions and billions of dollars was in, invested in this equation, Gianfranco. That's that's what the equation means: billions and billions of dollars, zero to sixty mile per hour. How how, how many seconds does it take? It all depends on this equation. How much torque can you generate from 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 the motor? And uh, this this ratio, T over I equals kT. This is this has a very important name. It's called torque constant, torque constant, okay? It's not a constant factor, it's called torque constant. For God's sake, come on. And this is the best website we can get, <clears throat> okay? So, so, uh, uh, so Gia, uh, 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 Gia Franco, this has nothing to do with acceleration. This has everything to do with the energy conversion. We do have a course called energy conversion, right? Uh, at undergraduate level. And, and a motor was invented by Tesla to do just this, to turn electricity, to turn energy uh, in the electricity into an energy on the uh, mechanical side, right? Gia Franco, you follow me? Yeah, that description certainly helps a lot. Okay, okay. The, so, 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 Gia Franco, this is what I expected. This is what I expected. That this was I'm expecting. That we all get on the same page. That we don't, uh, we don't stop with just a mathematical equation. Every every math, math equation, you uh, you see. You do not let it go until you fully <clears throat> understand its physical meaning. Is that clear? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so 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 start, starting from the very very first equation. Okay, and, and uh, what's the second equation, the president? Uh, well. I recognize E as being sort of back EMF, which is a voltage that's sent back into the circuit. Because whenever, um, at least speaking from practical experience, uh, whenever you turn a motor, there's some amount of back EMF that's fed back into the circuit, especially if there's any form of deceleration happening. That's kind of the basic concept of regenerative braking. Right. But right. again, it looks like it's related with that Right, uh, exactly. shaft constant factor. Very good, very good. That's that. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, the physical interpretation. You know, this represents that whenever motor turns, you always you always send back uh, a voltage called the uh, what what the, the electromagnetic force. What the e e f e f uh, e m f mean? Yes, electromagnetic force. Okay, so so so. Uh, uh, why? why? Why does motor generate this force? What is the what is the physical principle behind it? I think the basic concept is that motors are both motors and generators simultaneously. Perfect, Gianfranco. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. See, see here is energy conversion one way. Right, you you go from electricity to to torque. Here is a generator. This goes the other way from mechanical motion. This is speed. Right, depending on the rotating speed, you send back the uh, uh, a, a a voltage signal. 
Now, is this voltage uh, reinforce this voltage or subtract it from it? No, it would be subtracting from that voltage. Right, right. So that's why you, the, the motor speed will never run away by this equation. When, when no. motor speed is high enough, this voltage this back EMF will be equal to uh, the supply voltage. And uh, then there will, there will be no more current going through the coil, right? Then, 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 then uh, there's no more acceleration. When there's no more acceleration, your motor is what? When acceleration is zero, what does your motor what does your motor do? Constant speed. Right. So that so so it, the motor will run at the same speed theoretically forever, but it will not exceed that speed. So that speed depends on supply voltage and this key constant. They call it the back EMF constant or K uh, EMF. Most time we call it K EMF. So this is a this is a the same principle of a, a, a Faraday. Uh, uh, Faraday says so I can generate electricity from uh, uh, mechanical motion, okay? and, and this is the Faraday law. This is how how the electricity is generated. Okay? And this uh, this is all state. Discovery. This is a, a, a Orsted discovered that the electric current will generate a torque. And Orsted di discovered it by accident. The furthest did this by design. He was looking for it. He said, if this is true, this must be true. The, the, the mechanical motion has to generate electricity. But it took him six years to um, successfully discover an experiment to verify this. So, so, so there's, there's so much human uh, creativity, imagination behind this. How did uh, uh, Faraday know to look for this? Before Faraday saw this, but he believed in something like this. He had the faith in it. He, he had the faith that the world is symmetric. You can go from one way to, to the other. You can go from mechanical to electrical. But there has to be from uh, mechanical to uh, you can go from electrical to mechanical, but there has to be a, a way from mechanical to electrical. He he believes in symmetry of the world, and he uh, he persists, and he found it. Okay? So we should never we should never take these equations lightly. It took it took genius to discover. So so if you understand this equation to this extent you will never need anybody to explain this to you again. again never again in your life. You, you know this, it will stay with you for the rest of your life. You don't need any more explanations. That's what I'm looking for. That's the uh, physical insight I seek every time I see a mathematical equation. If I don't get to this level of understanding, I know I failed and I know I need to do more. Gio Franco, does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so so I'm setting a standard here. I'm setting a standard that you you uh you have to get to this level. Okay, you have to expect this uh, understanding from yourself with every mathematical equations that you encounter. If you don't understand to this uh, level, to this steps. Okay. It's inadequate, and you should work on this some more. We we have never been like introduced to mathematical equation like this before. This is yeah, absolutely. Well, this was this, once you taste this, once you. How an understanding like this, you will see all the inadequacies that you had before. Inadequacies on your on your part, and the inadequacies on the uh, the education uh, uh, philosophy that we were just given 
this equation yeah. and, and go copy and paste. Exactly. Without understanding. This is called understanding. And I didn't pick this example, Gia Franco did, <laughs> okay? I'm just using this uh, as a, as a, 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 a way to show that, you know, how far you can go, how deep you can go with, with this to any examples. And, and there's a seven of them, right? I can do this to all seven. And you, you already showed us the Maxwell equation. Exactly. It's feedback. Exactly. <laughs> I still remember that. Yeah, this is, this is this feedback. Is unbelievable, you, yes. This is embedded in the physical process. When you apply a torque, you uh, you you you, you uh, when you apply a current a current generated torque 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 uh, acceleration, so the motor starts to accelerate, right? But the motor has an internal balancing mechanism, which is back in the EMF, because the motor the motor is not going to accelerate forever. The motor will accelerate to the point where the back in the EMF back in the EMF is equal to the supply voltage. Yes. And when that uh, happens, you, the, 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 the circuit reaches the equilibrium, the fancy term uh, for steady state. So you can do all the fancy mathematics you want, but if you don't uh, uh, connect this to physics, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to physical uh, uh, meanings, you know, what you learn is very superficial. This is why uh, math is saying, after the class, you, you return all of that to, back to your professor, Matt. <laughs> but, but once Vishnu, I think this is the second time <laughs> that uh, we, we, I have you in my class. Right? Once you reach this level of understanding, you will never go back. You will never be satisfied with the previous, um, types of understanding. You will expect more from you, from yourself, and from your teachers, and from textbooks. Then, then you will see what textbooks, what teachers would provide you with what you need. Okay? And, and like, uh, like Andre said, he found in his conclusion, he found he has to rely on himself because nobody told him this. Nobody told him this, right? So don't expect this from your teacher, from your textbooks, right? Expect it from yourself, right? Are you with me? Yes, absolutely. The one out of 23. Yeah. Yes, with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I don't. Yes, I don't mean to yeah. put anybody on the spot. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> It feels like a, some kind of a re religious event. <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Gio Franco, uh, for bringing this problem up. Uh, I couldn't find a better example myself. Can it be learned linear subject from yours? I'm sorry. If you learn the linear system. From your, you, from your side, you didn't get the difficulty like in, right now. Uh, so, so Karan, can you, can you uh, explain this a little more? I, I didn't quite, you, you say there's something has something to do with linear system theory you, 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 you took last semester? Yeah, uh, he's saying that if you could take that linear that system is, class, it, that should be like totally different. Totally oh. different. And, I may teach it next year because uh, 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 Professor Dong may, may, may go on, may go on spectacle leave. <laughs> so don't, don't ask for it, you may get it. 
that's good for new students. <laughs> I, I, ta I taught this uh, linear system for like 10 years before, uh, before I, 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 I gave it to my younger colleagues. Okay, so who 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 want to explain this and that equation? We we spend an hour on 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 the first two equation, so so I'm hoping we can do better do, do it faster with these two equations. But uh, it, it's already uh, ten past five. So let's take a five minutes break, everyone. Sure. Okay. 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 Thanks, Professor. All right. Okay. All right. See you in five. Okay, we're back. Everyone back? <clears throat> yep. Okay. <clears throat> so so uh, who can tell me equation three? Who can describe equation three? What does it mean? Yeah, my boy. <clears throat> it says here, Newton's second law. Which one is Newton's second law? Jeff Franco, you were, you were talking about uh, acceleration, right? Yeah, that's what I had mentioned before. Um, this is sort of Newton's second law, granted okay. expressed in a different format to generate a differential equation to represent the dynamics of the motor. Okay. <clears throat> so so how is this second the Newton's second law? New, uh, uh, Newton says acceleration uh, equals what? Or, 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 or uh... well, I suppose in really basic terms, it's some form of mass times some second derivative. In this case, theta double dot could be assumed to be our okay. acceleration. Right. So mass times acceleration is equal to ki minus b theta dot. So, so, so that's the uh, sum of the forces acting on the motor, right? Uh, the torque generated by the motor. This is the uh, torque generated by the, uh, by the, by the, by the friction, right? This, the, the, uh, this is the friction, right? I believe that would be a damping force. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, <clears throat> uh if there's any damping, you know, this this will be it. Right? So, so, so that's the uh, mechanical motion. That's the Newton's law of motion, right? Newton's law of motion. Uh, what's this? It's Kirchhoff uh, voltage law, right? So, so uh, if you compare this with the uh, circuit, this is the, a voltage uh, summation, correct? This voltage equals this drop, yes, sir. this drop plus this. That's that's what this is, right? You can you can do the details, but that that's the that's just the loop equation, nothing more. So uh, so Gianfranco, this is where uh, you uh, transition from a differential equation to transfer function. Is this uh, where you find the the challenge? Right. So basically, getting from equation seven. Um, to an actual model in Simulink is where I found the difficulty. Okay, so so uh, from this to this, it's a, a Laplace transform. From uh, from uh, this to uh, to transfer function, it's just uh, algebraic manipulation. You you don't find any problem with this, right? No, sir. That was all straightforward. Okay, so so, so now uh, you are saying uh, from equation seven to eight and nine, that's where the that's where the, uh, the the difficulty is, right? No, I understand how to get uh, equations eight and nine from equation seven, but it's it's taking either of those and actually making a model we could look at in Simulink. Oh, so so your 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 issue is from this transitioning from this to Simulink. Yes. Okay, so uh, let let's let's look at the Simulink. Uh, let me. Uh, so once we get A, B, C, D, D is zero, A, B, C, D matrices, we could use the, uh, uh, so, so, so this is how you define A, B, C, D matrices. 
So now you have a, a, a B, C, D, a, a state space model for the motor and this for state space, right? So far, so good, J. Franco? Yeah, so far, so good. Okay. Uh, so, so, so that's, uh, that's finished the uh, uh, speed, uh, I mean, state space for the motor, right? So, but the uh, J. Franco's issue is with the signal link. Uh, where is the signal link? So, signal link. Below. Yeah, here. DC motors, signal link. Yeah. So, this is what you're talking about, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, so how, how do you go from, uh, from this to a signal link? Uh, from simulating uh, to, to a simulating uh, implementation, that uh, uh, that is what we're looking at. Uh, so so it's uh, it it shows it, it shows you how you build it step by step. This is the uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, electrical side, and this is the mechanical side. Yeah. And this is the, uh, the mechanical side with the damping. Uh, the torque is uh, sent to, to, uh, to the, uh, uh, this is an energy conversion from uh, current to the, uh, uh, to the torque. Okay. Uh, this is complete. This is the voltage. This is back EMF. This is at the course of law. Okay. And that gives you a, 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 a a voltage, voltage divided by, by the inductance. This is the uh, DIDT, uh, right? This is DIDT, this is the I, okay? I uh, goes, through, uh, goes through the torque constant, this is the torque. This is the friction uh, force. Summation of that is total force applied to the inertia and uh, from inertia to, uh, uh, to acceleration from acceleration integration to, uh, to, to velocity. So that's just a rough uh, overview of what's going on here. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's, that's roughly uh, how you go about doing, it. although I miss, I, I, uh, I skip a lot of details, uh, but to get here, you don't need state space equation. You go directly from the, uh, uh, from the differential equation. Well, you you take a, uh, you take it into a, a s domain, and uh, and you build the equation in s domain, uh, or uh, let me take it back. Uh, this is actually in, in time domain. You just use a one over s as the uh, operator, uh, integrator operator, to show that uh, this side is i, this side is uh, didt. Right? And in your equation, you have didt. And you have, uh, uh, this is the uh, second one. So this is speed. This is acceleration. Okay. This, is, this is really uh, poor, poorly done. This is uh, the, the theta, theta is the position. D theta dt is the speed. So this is velocity, motor velocity, motor acceleration. And uh, this is just a Newton's law. Okay. You are trying to build it. So, so, uh, so you have, uh, a uh, second order system, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, motor is the first order equation, a first order differential equation, and you turn this into a uh, mass uh, simulating implementation. This, uh, this is the, uh, the um, uh, Newton's law, and it's also first order. Okay? So, so all together, you have a second order system here. Okay? And uh, if you uh, take care of all the equation, eventually you, you have this build. Yeah. So, uh, Gianfranco, with this uh, overview, uh, can you uh, can you go back and uh, and uh, connect those with each step? Uh, this is the final uh, diagram, but you will start from here. You start from here. Right. I I think in sort of stepping through it like this, it it starts to make a little bit more sense. It okay. looks like we're basically very literally mapping out the equa the differential equations into right. sort of an integrator system. Really? Yeah. So so this is the differential equation you are mapping off. So, so right. 
So, so this is this, this is a top equation. This is bottom equation. The top equation get, uh, generate i, right? Bottom equation generate the uh, the, the velocity. Right? So, uh, how about this, J. Uh, Franco? Uh, you know, with this in mind, uh, uh, can you uh, step through this uh, uh, on your own? And uh, maybe we can compare notes on Thursday to see uh, if everything uh, can uh, go through. Yeah, I think I can. Um, okay. I think what I'll do is I'll take the model that I came up with uh, okay. for the project and compare it to what comes out of this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, and the, uh, uh, something else you, you can do here. Uh, this should be also equivalent to the state space equation. So if you take that state space equation, you you you, you stick it here, they should should give you a same input, should give you a same output. Okay, so so this is uh, uh, their way of showing how do you simulate a differential equation uh, using Simulink. Uh, incidentally, this is uh, uh, what I did last week, implementing uh, uh, ESO in. Uh, in terms of integrators and uh, gains and summations, right? So I also went from differential equation to uh, to to this kind of diagram, a diagram of integrator gains and summation. When you put it in this diagram, you can do it. You can simulate it in Simulink. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Matt, does it come together for you? Yes, the, uh, this so far I'm comfortable with this stuff. So far, <laughs> yes. Oh, obviously this is not enough, right? Uh, so so, I, I'm glad the uh, GF Franco you brought it up because you need to be able to do this for you to understand what I did last uh, last uh, uh, lecture when I uh, wrote down each. Equations uh, each uh, little box in the in the in the ESO. Let me let me show you uh, what I what I have. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm I'm starting Microsoft whiteboard where I stored. Uh, my lecture note from last time. This was a differential equation for the ESO. This is the uh, the simulating diagram I created. Do, do you see the similarity of what I did here and what I did today? I see that. Actually, yeah, that's it's much more clear now, in my opinion. Yeah. This is exactly uh, uh, based on the same uh, uh, same method. Uh, I, I go, I went from a, 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 the plant to a state space equation, and from a state space equation, I construct a digital twin, or or now we call uh, we, we in linear system we call it a state observer. Okay, so so this is the design. This is a uh, this is a state observer design. But I turned the first uh, uh, first equation into uh, into this diagram. X one dot equal to sum of three. These are the sum of three. One two three. X two dot equals one term. X two dot x two dot equals just one term. Okay. Together, this diagram simulate this equation. Right. Did everyone follow? Or just the uh, Joe yep. Franco? Yes. Okay. You all follow me? Because because that's uh as, as Ishan, I think uh didn't you uh uh implement the uh ESO this way? Ishan? Yes, sir, I did. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and uh you can also do it this way. You can you can you can you can do it using the block diagram using the uh, ABCD matrices, uh, like I did in the uh, ACC uh, motion 
as you see, uh, all three, right? I, I use ABCD matrix to implement this. Uh, 